So I get asked a lot of questions on the channel. MVG, how do I port stuff? You are really good at porting stuff to the Switch, the PSP, the Xbox, all that kind of stuff. How do I port software? Well, on today's episode, I'm going to walk you through the entire process end to end of a new software port. We're going to go ahead and port the game Heart of Darkness that came out for the Sony PlayStation 1 and the Windows PC back in the mid 90s over to the original Xbox. And I'm going to walk you through the entire process that I use that works for me. Heart of Darkness was released in 1998 by Amazing Studio. You may remember this game from the original PlayStation and Windows PC. It's a flick screen cinematic platformer that was designed by Eric Chahi, who previously worked on Another World, or also known as Out of This World in North America. Heart of Darkness shares many similarities with this style of game. When originally released, it was received by the media and fans averaging around 7.5 out of 10 on most major publications. The game was also penciled in for the Sega Saturn and Panasonic M2 systems, but cancelled on both for economic reasons. The game was also praised for its excellent platforming experience and cutscenes, and it was a great balance of cinema and gameplay. Unfortunately, Heart of Darkness was one of those games that was never brought forward to GOG, and because of the safe disk copy protection, you can't easily play it on a Windows 10 machine without patches. But thanks to the excellent work of Gregory Montoir, who painstakingly reverse engineered the game engine and released it as open source, it means that his work and the game can be brought to just about any system with a C++ compiler. So let's go ahead and see what's involved in porting this code to the original Xbox, a system that never saw the game ever release on. To begin, let's do some quick setup. We first pull down the source code and then open up Visual Studio 2003, create a new Xbox game project, then drag the source code we downloaded into the project, and then finally attempt to compile. We know it's not going to work, but let's see how bad the damage is. ignore the the floats for now let's see what this does now hopefully it should get further so we'll just do this uh, if def Xbox else and if So this uses SDL and we actually have SDL so that won't be a problem but the problem that we have is that we're using SDL 1.2 and this is SDL version 2 but we can certainly get around that that's not a, a deal breaker. So as you can see that's where Pact is being defined. Now in Windows, it is a Pragma pack, I believe. So that is not going to work, at least uh, in, in Visual, Visual C++ or Visual Studio. That is a GCC directive. So we'll need to do something like this, where we say if Xbox else uh, I'm just actually just going to leave it blank, I think. I think that should do it. Yep. It fixed it. So I guess we just got to do it for the remainder remainders
It's just one of those things where there's assumptions being made. Um, I mean, this is a very old C++ compiler. It doesn't always play nice with kind of modern code. All right, so let's see where we are now. XBR scaler, I'm probably just gonna get rid of. I'm not gonna delete the file, I'm just gonna say exclude from build for now. And I'm actually gonna exclude the STL2 file from build as well, because we know that's gonna cause a problem. So let's see where we are now. Our file. Which is back on intern, so I was almost correct, but not quite. Let's try that now. Okay, it seems to get further. All right, getting closer. Let's fix those. So I'm just gonna change that to int32t. What does that do for us? And let's grab max. That should satisfy that. As you can see now we only have one warning. because that does not exist on the original Xbox. I think that should compile. It does. Let's change this a little bit. If def Xbox else, all this stuff, because none of this stuff is on the original Xbox. I'm just going to say, if not to find Xbox. And we'll come back to it. Xbox, just ignore it because we don't care about command line stuff. This is all command line stuff. I think actually what I'm going to do is just ignore all of this stuff. Yeah, I'm okay with that. So now it's compiled, which is good, but now we have Linkos. good because all we need to do now is go to our linker and let it know that it needs to link SDL and 
linking, creating Xbox images, copying files to the Xbox, which I have currently turned off. So we've got the game compiling and linking, but does it actually work? Well, let's go ahead and start testing and debugging the code. It's absolutely going to blow up. So what we need to do now is start debugging and understanding why it's not working. Now, first things first, we don't have any data files on the Xbox itself. So there's setup.dat, that opens, there's the path file which opens, now this is our header file from before, let's see what happens now, what's the version we get back, there you go, version 10, which means it is doing the right thing. Let's see about this, that's version 6, so that's good. So, I think we're in good shape now. With any luck, if we go to our SDL file and go to one of these render functions that we commented out or we stubbed out, we should be hitting breakpoints where it's trying to render the screen right there so that's the update screen function as you can see it is hitting the update screen function
Of course, the source code and the game will be available. I'll leave a link to a web archive in the description below. So feel free to download it, play around with it, check out the source code, maybe put some enhancements in. I know you can add things like widescreen support, 720p. Those things could be easily included as well and maybe tightening up the controls. But overall, I'm pretty satisfied with this port. Gregory Montois' source code is exceptionally easy to work with, and he did an amazing job reverse engineering the game engine. Now, before I go, guys, I want to say a big thank you to Gregory Montois for the Hode of the Heart of Darkness engine reverse engineering of the game and the source code that he released for the game. Without his hard work, none of this would have been actually possible. So big thanks to him. I'm going to leave a link to his Twitter in the description below. Now, the other thing I will mention is I've got a completely unedited version of the entire porting process. I mean, there are some edits here and there, some breaks that I took when I was porting the game, but essentially it's over about an hour and a half long so that was pretty much the amount of time that it took me to get the game up and running on the original Xbox. Obviously, this is something that I'm quite familiar with, but it really shows how streamlined a, a good set of source code can really help with the porting process. And I want to just kind of illustrate that in the kind of unedited, unscripted video that I have for you guys. Now, I'm going to leave a link for that video in the description below as well. It's unlisted, but if you are interested in getting the full picture Check it out and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Well, guys, that will do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, you know what to do. Leave me a thumbs up. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.